All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are going to review yesterday's problem for today's lesson, which is April 1st, 2020. So if you look at my cross section here, which is again, the earth kind of opened up looking sideways underground. Sometimes we might see this like on the side of a highway where they've done some construction or where layers of the earth have been pushed up out of the ground um, because of tectonic action. And we have some places in Connecticut where we have layers of the earth and some places actually in um, East Haddam where layers of the earth are exposed and we can look at things like this. So we have um, our oldest layer is going to be Q. And I know I had went over that yesterday. Then we have O that got laid on top of that. Then we have N. And then it looks like M maybe has some uh, fossil marine organisms in it. That's the next one. And then we have L. And I know we had a little confusion here in my instructions. So it goes L and then back to P because using the law of cross-cutting concepts, if a volcanic intrusion or a lava intrusion goes through a layer, you know that the lava is, is younger. So the P is the intrusion and that is gonna go through that layer. So just to review again, we have Q, O, N, M, L, then P cuts up through. And then we have, again, some kind of tilting action that happened. Uh, maybe an earthquake, maybe some folding, but the whole surface of the land got tilted. And then we have another, it looks like sedim sedimentary rock got laid on top of it. And that could have been from uh, a shallow sea, maybe a lake bed, um, something where layers of sediment were deposited over time. So then we go to H, I, J, and then K. So hopefully that helps you guys a little bit with the cross sections there. Uh, Mrs. Thody will have to admit that uh, this is really um, one of my favorite areas, and this is what I majored in in college. So hopefully you guys uh, are enjoying it just a little bit as much as I do. Um, so there's some harder ones that maybe I'll throw at you again next week. Um, but if you get the basic idea here that the, the deeper you go, um, the older the rocks are sometimes, um, and that uh, layers get laid on top of each other as time goes by. And again, we're going to look at the fossils in those layers to figure out clues about the history of Earth. So today what I want you guys to do is um, look at this article. Um, uh, and there's also a, a video about the geology of Connecticut and um, uh, also, there's an article here about the Moodus noises. And I was just going to actually read a little bit of this article about the Moodus noises to you just so that you could hear my voice and I could do a little bit of explaining. So if you look here, it says, although earthquakes have been the centered in a number of different parts of Connecticut, the state is best known for its seismic acti activity near the little town of Moodus. The word Moodus comes from the local Native Americans who called on the locality of Macamudus, which means places of noise. The Native Americans had long considered the area to be a sacred place because of the booms, the cracking sounds, and the rumbles that often occurred at that locality. The noises seemed to originate beneath the hill of the, that the local colonists called Mount Tom. And that's over near Macamuda State Park or Cave Hill, if any of you guys are living over there. In the 1980s, scientific data confirmed that Moodus noises are the sounds of small earthquakes that are taking place less than a mile below Mount Tom. The Moodus earthquakes tend to be concentrated in earthquake swarms, where many small events are heard and felt over the course of several weeks or months. During the 1980s, several earthquake swarms took place at Moodus, each of which lasted a few months um, and were documented, documented to consist of well over 100 small earthquakes. So if you look at this map here, this is just a map of all the different earthquakes um, that have occurred from 1975 to 2017. 
And um, then they, they go on to talk a little bit about a big earthquake, and I'll stop here. Not all of the earthquakes at Moody's have been small. On May 16, 1791, at about 8 p.m., all of Connecticut, as well as parts of the surrounding states, were rocked by an earthquake. In the, in the Moody's and East Haddam area, some chimneys were reported cracked and some stone fences were reported to be thrown down by the earthquake. Some cracks in the local soil were also found. To the, to the west, this earthquake was felt as far as New York City and Albany. It was felt in Boston to the northeast. This earthquake was followed by a large number of small shocks during which Moody's noises were heard. The 1791 earthquake at Moody's is estimated to have been uh, or to have had a magnitude between 4.4 and 5.0. So you can read on here um, if you're interested in other um, earthquakes and there's some links down there, but I just wanted to let you guys know that there is some really interesting uh, geologic connection between our town's name, uh, our town's name, uh, the names of your school, um, the Moody's noises, and uh, you know just some some interesting facts about that. So um, I just want you guys to write down a little bit about what you know about the geology of the United States and Connecticut after watching the two videos and what you learn from me reading to you about the Moody's noises. Okay, I apologize for the kids talking and the dog barking, but I don't want to have to record this again. All right, everybody, have a good day, and uh, tomorrow you'll be getting outside, hopefully, um, for your science um, assignment. So stay tuned for that. Okay, talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.